Hey, it's Jason from Bohemia Bees, and you know what time it is? It's swarm season. So you know what you need to do? You need to get your swarm traps out. What is a swarm trap? Well, this, my friends, is a swarm trap. It's one of many different types of swarm traps. As you can see, there are different types of swarm traps. This is just one of them. And the design that uh, Dr. Seeley, who's a beekeeper, uh, scientist, uh, and has studied swarming and catching swarms uh, a lot and, and determined what's the right way in his mind based on his studies and his perspective on how to build a swarm trap. We have a video on how to build a swarm trap similar to this. Uh, it's not the exact same swarm trap, but we've modified this one a little bit differently than the, the original one we built. We'll put a link in the description below if you're interested in seeing that. Uh, we'll also probably be publishing a new uh, video on how to build a swarm trap, swarm trap just like this. So uh, stay tuned for that one as well. Make sure you subscribe to the channel in order to get catch that video when we do an updated version of how to build a swarm trap. But I think we got to answer one other big question, which is on most people's minds that maybe you're not beekeepers or they're new beekeepers, but mostly non-beekeepers. What the heck is a swarm and why does it happen? Okay, so what is a swarm? We just talked about a swarm trap, but you know, you need to get a trap, trap a swarm, but what's a swarm? So for you non-beekeepers, if you are interested in trying to figure out what the heck is a swarm, well, I can only give you some basics on it. We don't have a lot of time to get into the, you know, the etymology of, of the insects and how they work and bees work uh, and, and more the scientific side of a swarm. But in layman's term, a swarm is just really a way for a colony to grow uh, and split outside of their existing colony or cavity in which they are, are living. Right? So bees will find a cavity uh, that's suitable to them. Sometimes it's in a, a cavity in a hive that we've built for them. Sometimes it's in a, in a cavity of a tree or somewhere else. Uh, when they've basically grown to fill that cavity, um, they have to determine, hey, we can't live here and continue to grow like we're growing. There's not enough room to put additional stores. There's not enough room to put more additional brood. So we have to pass our colony along by splitting. So what they do is they create a swarm cell or a queen uh, in their colony, sometimes multiple queens. Uh, and that queen, uh, once she is emerged or once she emerges, she takes half the colony with her uh, in a flurry, in a flurry in the air. You can see in the video right here, we did that a little while ago. Uh, and that, that swarm um, was caught uh, and it typically um, is a place where Bees have already done their research. Yes, bees do research. They find the cavity they're looking for uh, that's ideal to move into uh, and that's attractive to them. So when I say ideal to move into and attractive to them, what does that mean? I just showed you a bunch of pictures of what swarm traps look like. How do I know that my swarm trap is the right swarm trap? Well, uh, I've done a little bit of reading and research as well. And Dr. Seeley, and I mentioned this earlier, that Dr. Seeley uh, is a scientist, beekeeper, who's been studying bees for many years and has done a lot of research on, you know, the attractive cavity or the appealing cavity uh, of, a, of a swarm trap or a cavity for a new hive swarm to move into. When that uh, colony is ready to split and they, they swarm out of the colony, uh, there's a couple things that happen before that. And again, I'm not going to get into the scientifics of how a swarm is created per se. Uh, there are scout bees that will go out and look for an ideal cavity for them to move into. What is that ideal cavity? I'll put a link in the description below on the book that you can download uh, or download or buy on Amazon uh, and, and read about Dr. Seeley's approach to identifying that size cavity. Uh, but uh, you know, to sum it up, bees need to replicate and grow. If they grow bigger than the space that they're in, they need to split out and create another colony somewhere else, hence swarming. And swarming is very amazing in that when it happens, the bees are in a flurry when they come rushing out of the hive, they already know where they're going and they may stop at a, uh, an intermediary location to rest uh, until they reach their final destination of the place that the scout bees have gone out earlier to locate. So some may see these clusters of bees on branches like this in your neighborhood or in your community. Those are just temporary locations for bees until they've moved into their final location. Hopefully not in your house uh, because we don't want that. That will become a a little bit messier of a removal for a beekeeper, and sometimes they create a nuisance for the homeowner. Uh, but if we can catch them on the branch, if we can catch them in that swarm cluster, 
and bring them back into a proper hive colony in an apiary to manage. That's the best way to protect against these bees moving into a structure. Uh, but if they have to move into a structure, I want them to move in the structure that I set up for them, hence the swarm trap. So let's take a look at our swarm trap and we'll talk about why we designed the way we do. Okay, so back to the swarm trap. If you notice, this is a box. You know, some of the other pictures I showed you earlier may look a little different, but we build this as a form of a box for them to uh, move into that's easy for us to essentially um, open, close, maintain, clean out, set up, hang, put where we want to put it. Um, the dimensions of this box uh, are important in that in Dr. Steely's work, uh, and, and below I'll show you the the cubic space that he recommends. Again, that's a recommendation. That's not the exact because I've had bees move into many locations that are not exactly that size, but they typically look, if you need a rule of thumb, they move into a cavity the size of a hive body super or a deep, single deep, medium super, or two medium supers. They move into a space that they can grow into. So why do they choose this space? What attracts them? What brings them to this space? And this goes into the purpose of a swarm trap is that we've created the space for them to go into. There's an entrance in the front, as you can see down here. Uh, it has a dial disc so we can close it off when they are in the, the swarm trap and we want to bring them back to the apiary. Uh, the cavity needs to be put, uh, have something in here that we're able to capture the bees on and then transfer them into a regular hive body. We do that with frames. We don't just do it with any frames though, and here's why. Okay, we select old comb. Old comb from a hive that's maybe a dead out from winter. We try to make sure there's no pests or anything in this that, that potentially could cause a problem for the bees. Um, it's usually from our apiary, so we know it's not old equipment from somewhere else that hasn't been inspected. Uh, but this, this old comb has a lot of neat things about it. One, it has the pheromones, the trace pheromones from another old colony. Uh, we make sure that there's no honey in it and there's no pollen. They don't need any resources in there because they're going to bring the resources along with them. But when the scalpies are out looking for that next colony space or that cavity, this will attract them to it. Um, as I stand here talking to you recording this video, there's been a few bees that have come by and just kind of floated past the frames that I have on the ground and around this box. Why? Because they smell the pheromones. They smell those trace pheromones that, that are left behind by the old colony that used to work these this, uh, these frames. So we're going to use old comb when we load these uh, frames up. We're also going to put, interestingly enough, um, a frame that has undrawn comb. And you're going to say, well, why would you do that, Jason? You said use old comb. Well, we're going to use a frame that's foundation, heavy wax, maybe a little bit of drawn comb on it to give them a head start. But see, a swarm, the good thing about a swarm is that they're loading their bellies up before they leave with all this nectar and honey to be able to go on the long trip. And so when they get to where they're at, they realize that they may or may not have honeycomb for the queen to lay in. So they're going to fill their bellies up so that they can immediately get to work and actually start to build comb. So it's a good time to put frames with foundation only and not comb as well in addition to that old comb so that there is a place for the queen to lay on initially in that old piece of comb, but these pieces of foundation are undrawn and literally within days, you will have fully drawn comb on these foundation frames. It's another way to help mitigate some pests because naturally old comb will draw wax balls and things like that. So you don't wanna to have too much old comb in there that sits in there for year over year. You wanna make sure you keep and clean out those swarm traps from those types of things. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take these frames, we're gonna load them up in the box, and then we'll show you what we do last uh, to make sure that we can try to attract the, uh, the bees to the swarm trap. Okay, so now we've got our swarm trap loaded up with frames. We didn't put all five frames in. I only put four in, the old comb and some foundation with some slightly drawn comb on it, but primarily not. Remember, this is a box that's designed that's a lot deeper than a standard deep frame. So all that empty space below in the swarm trap, Dr. Seeley found that it gives the, the bees a sense that they are there's an open cavity, that there's a bigger space for them to move into and, and grow into. It doesn't just feel like it's a small little box, which is why some swarm traps that you may purchase online that are the size of just five frames may not be as attractive and you may want to reduce the amount of frames you put in there, but that's a whole other discussion. We're using this swarm trap because it works for us. Um, baiting a swarm trap is the next thing. So how do you bait a swarm trap? What do you put in there? We well, obviously don't want to put any type of sugar or pollen or anything that could attract pests before the bees move in. You want them to be clean frames, like I said, and you want to make sure that the swarm trap is clean as well, meaning that there's not a lot of debris or a bird hasn't moved in, so on and so forth. Um, 
we're going to set our dial to the front open and then we're going to take a couple drops of of attractant what is this attractant well it's a mixture for us we purchase uh raw nasnoff gland or mimic to nasnoff gland uh vials we also get our hands on some very clean organic uh, lemongrass oil uh, and we mix those together to make our own proprietary blend uh, we also put in uh, old queens so when we have a queen that's mated in a colony i know that may be old beekeeper superstition but as you can see in the bottom of this jar we have some old queens floating around in there and that really is just us sort of supporting that old superstition that those old queens uh, soaking in that mixture over time can create a little bit more of a potent attractant for bees if they were choosing to select this cavity over another. So we're going to take and we're going to put some drops on the frames. You're not going to overload it. You don't want to overwhelm. Bees are very sensitive to the smell of lemongrass oil. So you literally just want to take and put a couple drops on the top. And I always do it on the opposite frames and on the wood. So it sort of soaks in. Now I always put a little bit on the roof as well, just because it can drip down. But again, that's all. I'm not doing a lot. I might take a little bit and put it down here at the entrance to it once I get this set up. But it's really just to create the scent that if they arrive by the smell of the lemon of the of the attractant, they'll also arrive and they see the comb, they smell the old comb as well, the trace. Uh, pheromones that may be still there and that's really all it then you just have to really hang your swarm trap up and wait where do you hang it well it's recommended that you're at least you know five to six feet in the air but i've caught traps i've caught swarms sitting on the bench uh in my apiary with old equipment right so it's not necessarily a, a rule of thumb to say you have to do any of this the exact way i'm telling you these are just recommendations that we give based on the, what's been successful for us Okay, so we've hung our swarm trap. This swarm trap's actually hung right in our apiary because we believe that setting up a swarm trap in your apiary is a good practice for beekeepers to do if you have more than one or two hives. And you just wanna make sure if you can try to attempt to capture your swarms, if you miss a hive in an inspection and they happen to still swarm, it's a good kind of insurance policy. So it's always a good practice to have a swarm trap or two in your apiary if you have multiple hives. Um, or even one hive. It's always a good thing. You never know, you might catch a swarm that's in a local tree line or that's traveled a little ways that's attracted to your apiary in the swarm trap in your apiary. So it's always good to have them everywhere. See if you can get uh, access to local land owners uh, who will give you access to their property, put them on tree lines. Power lines tend to be pretty good as well. We've seen a lot of good ex um, good results with putting them along you know, power line rows, things like that. So that's always a good place. Um, the more swarm traps you have during swarm season, the better chances you have. So it doesn't hurt to just to put them out. Um, it's a good practice. We've hung our swarm trap up. We've opened it high. We've put the bait in it. We've put the old comb. And that's really it. Now it's just really waiting. So let's hope we can catch a, a, a bee because a bee that we don't buy is a free bee. And we like free bees. So thanks for watching here on Bohemia Apiary. If you think you may be interested in getting a little bit of my secret attractant sauce, hit the subscribe button, comment below, and I may send you a small vial of my attractant that you can try in your swarm traps. But you gotta do those things. Make sure you subscribe, hit a comment below, hit the like button, and remember, beekeeping here at Bohemia Apiary is definitely more than a hobby. It's an obsession. Thanks for watching, everyone.